A crisp Saturday unfurled in London, the year etched in the city's weathered facade as 1889. A brisk wind, carrying the scent of chimney smoke and distant rain, whipped around my legs as I strode purposefully towards 221B, Baker Street. The rhythmic clack of my boots against the cobblestones echoed a familiar tune, a melody that spoke of routine, of comfort in the predictable. Yet, beneath the surface, a tingle of anticipation hummed, a Saturday spent with Sherlock Holmes rarely followed a well-worn script. Reaching the familiar doorway, a dark oak sentinel against the pale brick facade, I raised my gloved hand to knock. However, the sound of raised voices, sharp and laced with tension, drifted from within. Curiosity, a constant companion in my adventures with Holmes, flared. I paused, ear pressed against the cool wood, catching snippets of a heated debate. One voice, gruff and laced with frustration, belonged to a stranger. The other, calm yet laced with a hint of amusement, was unmistakably Holmes. A moment of indecision followed. It seemed an inauspicious time to interrupt a potentially volatile situation. With a sigh, I turned to leave, muttering under my breath about returning another time. Perhaps a leisurely stroll through the British Museum was in order, a chance to lose myself amongst the whispers of history. Nonsense, my dear Watson, boomed a familiar voice from behind. The door swung open with surprising force, revealing Holmes himself, a mischievous glint dancing in his sharp, gray eyes. His lanky frame, clad in a worn dressing gown, seemed to fill the doorway. You've arrived at the perfect time. Surprise washed over me. I thought you were busy, I remarked, surprised by his sudden appearance and the hint of disarray clinging to him. Busy, yes, he replied ushering me inside with a wave of his hand. But never too busy for a visit from my esteemed colleague. As I stepped into the familiar sitting room, a haven of clutter and deduction, my gaze fell upon a new figure. A burly man with a fiery complexion, a shock of red hair that rivaled the embers in the fireplace, and a tightly buttoned waistcoat that strained across a portly belly stood awkwardly by the mantelpiece. His small eyes darted nervously around the room, taking in the stacks of books, the chemical experiments bubbling in the corner, and finally landing on me with a flicker of suspicion. Dr. Watson, Holmes greeted, gesturing towards the stranger. This is Mr. Jabez Wilson. Mr. Wilson, Dr. John Watson, my trusted confidant and chronicler of our adventures. We exchanged polite nods, and Mr. Wilson shifted uncomfortably under my scrutiny. An experienced I could easily discern him as a tradesman, his worn suit and calloused hands betraying his profession. The air hung thick with an unspoken question, a silent plea for help emanating from the man's nervous demeanor. Holmes, with a hint of amusement in his voice, interjected, observant as ever, Watson. Mr. Wilson was indeed a workman in the past, a fact I believe I deduced from the his sentence was cut short by a strangled sound from Mr. Wilson, who seemed both impressed and flustered by Holmes's quick assessment. A bead of sweat trickled down his forehead, 
leaving a glistening trail in the firelight. Introductions complete, the air settled into a tense calm. Mr. Wilson cleared his throat, his voice raspy from what could have been nerves or overuse. He reached into his pocket, his hand emerging with a crumpled newspaper clipping. His fingers brushed against the worn edges as he unfolded it, revealing an advertisement that seemed to hold the key to his reason for visiting. I leaned in, captivated by the unfolding mystery. The advertisement, stark and bold against the faded newsprint, announced the formation of a curious society, the Red-Headed League. It promised a handsome sum of four pounds a week to any gentleman with fiery locks willing to devote a few hours each day to copying encyclopedia entries. Holmes, ever perceptive, noted my keen interest. A sly smile played on his lips, a flicker of amusement dancing in his gray eyes. Ah, Watson. It seems the investigative spirit runs strong within you today, he remarked, his tone laced with a playful challenge. Mr. Wilson's tale unfolded, a bizarre mix of intrigue and absurdity. He spoke of being recruited by this peculiar league solely based on the color of his hair, a fact that seemed both arbitrary and suspicious. He described attending daily meetings at a dingy office, surrounded by a motley crew of red-headed men, all diligently copying entries from a massive encyclopedia that began suspiciously with the letter A. The more he spoke, the more suspicious the whole arrangement seemed. Holmes listened intently, his lean frame poised like a hunting cat. 